you have worked with, mentored, interviewed, been around some of the most successful entrepreneurs of our time, right? Yes. Talk to me because everybody thinks that I'm a boss. Everybody thinks, you know, I know more than the person I'm working for and I should go out and start my own business. I'm going to be successful the minute that I incorporate and, you know, put INC behind the company name. Talk to me about some commonalities that you have found in speaking to all of these people across different industries. Like, what do they all have in common? So there's a few things. First of all, this idea that somehow you're better than somebody else if you're an entrepreneur and somebody else has a job, I've never heard that come out of the mouth of any entrepreneur, not the successful one. Wow. So, you can be truly successful and build wealth and never be an entrepreneur. You can do that. You can, you can do both. I mean, I'm in a stage in my life where I still have my job, quote unquote, my career at Black Enterprise, but I'm doing entrepreneurial stuff outside of Black Enterprise. Wealth creation is not about how you make the money. It's about what you do with the money after you make it. That's what wealth creation is about. So you have extremely wealthy people who have never had a, who never had a business. They just manage the money they made <laughs> in such a way that they've acquired assets, accumulated wealth, you know, some of the stuff I teach in my, in my class in Newark. So they don't buy into this idea that because I'm an entrepreneur, you're not, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. In fact, they don't buy into I'm better than you because I'm rich, because I'm powerful, because I got a big business. It, 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 so what I said about Mr. Graves applies to almost all the really successful people that I've ever interviewed. They don't, they don't, they don't think like, Oh, I'm, I'm better. You know, in fact, and they don't, and it's, it's the other thing. They don't want to be the smartest person in the room. That ain't, they're like, no, if I'm the smartest person in the room, I got the wrong people in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, their gift is being able to say, here's what I know. And here's what I don't know. And then here's what I got to accomplish. Here's the mission that I'm serving through my business or through my company. Now, since I can't do it by myself, because either one, I'm only one person, and two, I don't have all the knowledge. My job is to be the visionary. And this is definitely what Mr. Graves is. Mr. Graves was ever, didn't, wasn't in publishing. Mr. Graves never knew, started a magazine before. He didn't even know what he didn't know. So, but once he made up his mind, okay, this vehicle needs to be created to help black people find their way to business and financial success. He knew what the vision was. Then it was things like, I got to hire people. I got to find people who can get me there, who know what I don't know. I mean, he, he, he used to brag about people like me and Derek because we were, he was like, oh my, his thing was like, I got the smartest people. Man, I got the most brilliant people. I got, you know, because his, his pride was not in being the smartest person in the room. His pride was in being able to attract people, hire people that would buy into his mission that knew things that he didn't know and could do things that he couldn't do. And that was true. That's true for everybody from, you know, Dick Parsons, the former chairman of Time Warner, you know, here's the thing. When somebody thinks that they got to like prove how important they are, what we call B people, B people have to convince you they're A people. Woo, woo, preach. Those are the people that's like, don't you know who I am? And I can't talk to you. You got to talk to my secretary. And you know, you, you, you and I both know we've been around. I said, no, we, <laughs> we, we know. You are preaching now, brother. But the truly excellent people, the A people, they don't get, they're like, I know I'm an A person. I don't got, so I'll give you an example. Dick Parsons has been, had been on the cover of Black Enterprise, I think three times, a total of three times ago. He was on a, when he was chairman of Time Warner, I, I mean, just one of the highest ranked, most powerful, forget about black people in corporate America, people in corporate America. And we had him on the cover. His only request of us was like, because of course they're busy. They only want you to protect their time. So he was like, Here's the window I got. If you can get me in and out for this cover, I'll do it. Sean, I've seen people with, who, who have one-tenth the power of him. They got 15. They got an entourage of 15 people. They got a this, rider. They got a rider. You know, they got. And it's like, who are all these people? <laughs> Dude came in. You wouldn't even know who he was. He came in by himself, came in, took the shot, did everything we asked him to do. It wasn't a whole bunch of pushback and arguing it was like, I trust you. You're the guys doing the magazine. I it was the smoothest thing. And, and I don't want to make it sound like this corporate America. Shaq, when we had Shaq on the cover, 
the smoothest thing, the easy, you know, just easy. Um, Nick Cannon, we did a group cover with him, showed up to the shoot 20 minutes early, was just like professional, not like I'm Nick Cannon and you wait till I get there, not, I'm, don't you know I'm Shaq, you do it. No, and all the A people I know that I've experienced through my work at Black Enterprise, and I'm, I'm going to connect that, that dot to the most successful people who want to be entrepreneurs, they know how to treat people. They know how to respect time. They require to be respected, but they don't, they're, not, they're not asking you to respect them because they're better than you. They're asking you to respect them because all people should be respected. And so, you know, I, I, it's just a common thread. Yeah, they got business acumen. Yeah, they, you know, people, you, people look at these success tips. But a lot of times, that's not the thing that makes the difference. It's really having a clear vision of what you want to do. Enough of an ego, because you need ego. Yep. Enough of your ego to have the courage and the confidence to pursue that vision, even with adversity. But not so much ego that you can't team up and collaborate, whether it's with employees, other companies that even that could be competitors. So that because it takes, I, I'll put it the way um, Reverend T.D. Jakes put it when I interviewed him at one of our conferences several years ago. If all you got is your two hands, you can't build anything. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.